the time to take the plunge because there is so much variety on offer in those catalogues. Mm -hmm. There are literally hundreds of auctions going on throughout the country throughout the year. So now is the time to head down and check out the auction action. Now, people often ask us how to behave in the auction room. Yes, that's right. Be visible. Make sure the auctioneer can see you. Yes, have a budget and stick to it. Oh, and don't wave at friends <laughs> across the auction room. Let's take a look what our buyers bid for on today's programme. Firstly, in Burnhope, County Durham, some eating habits are barking mad. Your dogs eat vegetables. Yes, <laughs> potatoes, apples, beetroot. In central London, I've got to do the penguin to squeeze in. You literally have to get like that down the side to get into the bed. And we head to the Valleys of Wales in the town of Abertillery, where this terrace had me purring. This house doesn't have to do much more to impress me. All these properties have been sold at auction. We'll find out who bought them and how much they paid for them when they went under the hammer. Sold. I'm in the northeast of England in County Durham and the small village of Burnhope. Well, the weather's closed in a bit, but the property I'm here to see, is if I can see it through the mist, is this. It's a semi-detached bungalow, three bedrooms, at a guide price of £39,950. Plus, let's go inside. <laughs> so. What have we got? Well, through the front door, um, nice storage cupboard there. Always quite useful to have that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> OK, right, well, you obviously want to sort that door out at some point. Um, bedroom there is half-decent size. <laughs> It's always the small things, isn't it? Uh, rear bedroom there, more storage units. I wonder if the doors close on those. And then through into the rear of the property. Actually, for a bungalow, it's feeling quite kind of spacious, so we like that. Patio doors out onto the garden gives this room a nice feeling of light and airiness. And then onwards to the kitchen. <laughs> But before you get to the kitchen, there's this little dining room area. Lots of sort of DIY stuff. But then through to the kitchen. And this part of the house is actually a, a more recent extension. And wow, does it give a lot of extra space. For a start, you've got this huge kitchen area, which dated though the units are and probably need to replace those. It's a really nice size. And then onwards to basically utility area, really giving the bungalow lots and lots of extra space. And in general, layout, um, well, surprising. Does it work? Yes, no, not sure. I mean, there is space to play with. At the front entrance, apart from the two bedrooms you've already seen, to your left off that hallway, there is another little hallway, allowing access to a third bedroom. Now, I'm all for good storage, but really, there's a lot of wasted space of cupboards and hallways and doorways. And the bathroom next door to the third bedroom is tiny. It could flow so much better. And I don't know why, but there's something about this bathroom that makes me a little bit teary-eyed. Perhaps that's why, perhaps that's why I see the dolphin, it makes me cry but the house itself is only half the story. Come around the back of the bungalow and not only can you see the extension, but also this absolutely fantastic garden. Stretches all the way back to the fence in the distance there. There's also a fairly tumble-down garage, so a really nice amenity area. Space for possibly another extension here or a conservatory. Either way, really nice additional thing to have. And at a guide price of £39,950, there's a lot of property and land that went under the hammer. 
we asked a local estate agent for his opinion as to the best way to add even more value to this bungalow. A potential buyer might look at uh, a way of incorporating a, a kitchen dining area into the property and, and possibly changing the layout in that way. And once the bungalow had been refurbished, what would be the prospects of letting it out? I think there would be a reasonable rental demand for the property, probably expecting to achieve something in the region of £400 to £425 per calendar month. And if the plan was to then sell the property on, how much could it achieve on the resale market? Once refurbished to a decent standard, I would expect this property to achieve a sale price somewhere in the region of £90 to £100,000. I think a potential owner of the property may consider adding a conservatory, coming out of the French doors from the lounge and then through to the rear garden. Also, the garage is in a poor state of repair, so I think that would need to be replaced. Um, once these improvements have been made, I would consider putting the property on the market for a price in the region of £110 to £115,000. Well, for a guide price of £39,950 plus, there was a lot of property on offer here. Let's see who spotted it when it went under the hammer. Got this going in, price guide of £39,950, can ask for £40,000 to start. No bid? 35 bid. 37 anywhere else. 37 standing. I'll take 39. 39. 41. 41 bid. 43? There was a lot of interest in the room, and we rejoined the auction at £58,000. 58, 58 and a half, 58 and a half bid, 59, 59 bid, 60 and a half bid, 61, 61 bid, 61 and a half, 62, 62 and a half, 63, 63 and a half, 64, 64 and a half, 65, 65 and a half. 66. The gentleman sitting down is 65 and a half thousand. 66. No, the gentleman sitting down is 65 and a half thousand. So your last chance for 66 on selling to the gentleman in the fourth row is 65 and a half. I'm selling it once at 65 and a half. Selling the second time is 65 and a half thousand pounds. Sold, the gentleman sitting down. And the successful bidder paying £65,500 was Graham, who was at the auction with his wife, Karen. They'd been married for 29 years and were teenage sweethearts. Karen works as a manager in a local business. Graham's a self-employed bricklayer who comes from a long, illustrious line. His father and grandfather were also bricklayers. A handy background to have when it comes to property development. I met them both back at the bungalow to find out their plans. Karen, Graham, great to meet you both. Congratulations. Tell me why you wanted to buy this place. We want to sell our previous house and we need somewhere to live to take all our junk. So we'll do that one up. OK. And then eventually, after a couple of years, we will well rent this out and move on. Right. But we're going to live here. Oh, great. And what's prompted the move? We need to move on because our current house has got four bedrooms and our son's moved out. So there's only two of us rattling around in there and it's too large. So this is actually a bit of a downsize, albeit a decent size house. And why did you choose this particular house then out of the ones you could have gone for? It's got a big garden. That's a big plus to us. Uh, we need to put a garage up in order to store the various bits of junk that we've accumulated over the years. And as I'm a builder, there's lots to go in, at, you know, not household things and other stuff. What about inside? What do you think of that? It's nice the way it is, but to suit what we want for us to live in here. There's it, things we'd like to do, and I think they're, they're doable. Tell me what you're going to do to it, then. Well, as you come in the front door, there's a passage there, so we'll extend one of the bedrooms out into the passage. We'll just take that, that corner without losing the passage there, so that's extended this living room a, a small bit, and remove the passage from in front of the bathroom. We'll have a bigger bathroom then and then we'll be able to put a bath in there as well, which will be an advantage. Graham and Karen have sussed the real issues with the house and its wasted space. By getting rid of the front hallway and entrance, they can steal the whole space for the bedroom, the living room and the bathroom much better. And they have some other ambitious plans. Take this ceiling out because we're going to make it a, a vaulted ceiling, so the ceiling will go up the loft. Oh, wow. This chimney needs to be removed and rebuilt because outside it's falling apart. And you can do a lot of that yourself? Physically capable of doing all that myself and how to do it. Unfortunately, I'm going to be under surgery shortly, so I'll be out for about three months. Surgery on what? It's just a hernia. Oh, okay. But it means I can't 
physically pulling me down. So I need to get employees and people I know in to, to do some of this stuff. I do employ one bricklayer, so a rainy day comes along that we have today, you can be doing something rather than doing nothing and paying a man anyway. Graham intends to remove the wall between the dining room and kitchen to really open up the bungalow, and the couple plan to add a conservatory to make the most of the view out onto the garden. And Karen, are you going to be involved on a sort of day-to-day -day oh, yes. basis? Yes, um, I'm painter, decorator, labourer and gardener. Oh, well done. Yeah. So what are you going to do outside there? You keep talking about the garden. It seems like the garden was like one of the main reasons you bought the house. We've got three dogs, so they love oh, it. What kind of dogs have you got? We've got Labradors. Oh, great. But the lawn isn't going to stay that large. We're going to reduce that, have vegetables in there. You grow your own, do you? Yeah. What the dogs don't eat, we get. <laughs> <laughs> your dogs eat vegetables? Yeah, <laughs> potatoes, apples, beetroot. I haven't touched the rhubarb, but most everything, yeah. Bad dog! No, no biscuit! Well, vegetable growing for dogs, I think that's a first for me. But make no bones about it, there's a fair bit of work to be tackled here. Fortunately, they have decided to take their time, with the bulk of the work taking around a year and a £25,000 budget. What's next on the agenda then? A year of sort of getting this place sorted and then move in? That's the yes. plan. Yes, yeah. we'll do this one first and return to the one we're in now to, to complete. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing how you get on. OK, we'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Karen and Graham seem to have found the perfect property for them, close to where they live and with the potential to be converted into exactly what they're looking for. But a long time scale, and I'm sure their dogs can't wait to get their paws on those tasty vegetable treats. You can find out how they get on later in the show. Whilst in central London, it's been hard hats all the way. We knocked down every single wall without any exception. We return now to the northeast of England and what was a very damp and drizzly village of Burnhope in County Durham, where the clouds were gathering over this rather shabby and tired three bed semi detached bungalow which was bought on auction day for £65,500 by local couple Graham and Karen, who were planning on making the bungalow their home after downsizing from their four-bedroom family house. They had plenty of work ahead of them, tackling a space-wasting layout, and they were also looking forward to introducing their three Labradors to the bungalow's huge garden. So what are you going to do outside? It seems like the garden was like one of the main reasons you bought the house. The lawn isn't going to stay that large. We're going to reduce that, have vegetables in there. You grow your own, do you? Yeah. What the dogs don't eat, we get. <laughs> <laughs> your dogs eat vegetables. They do. Yes. Labradors eat vegetables. Labradors yeah. will eat anything. Yes, <laughs> potatoes, apples, beetroot. I haven't touched the rhubarb, but most everything, yeah. <laughs> They had a 25 grand budget in mind and thought it would take a year to do at least the bulk of the work. Two years later, we returned. Wow! Well, I'd say this was definitely worth the wait. All the waste of space this bungalow suffered from has been cleverly reclaimed. The old front door has gone and this space has been used to create a bigger front bedroom. The way in is now at the back, through what was the old utility area, and now leads to a shower. A shower at the back door? A bit odd. That's until you discover it's a rather clever shower for their three dogs for those wet and muddy winter months. Brilliant! In you go, T. I'm just so looking forward to using that for the winter when the dogs are filthy. <laughs> Around the back, the sun is certainly shining on this light and airy bungalow. The conservatory is a lovely addition. There's a very handy double garage and then onto that all-important garden that's now dog and vegetable friendly. 
I think I will spend most of our time in the conservatory. It's such a lovely, bright room. But we moved the patio door that was straight out into the garden, moved that towards the middle of the room so that it, was, it looked better. Put the conservatory on then, got a better view from the living room to the conservatory. They've used the hallway space to create a huge bathroom. Terrific! The two remaining bedrooms have had chimney breasts removed, increasing their size. Along with that and re-skimmed walls and a clean paint job, they're looking far better. I'm really impressed with the character. They brought to this dated bungalow, but it's been a long haul. It was delayed by six months due to planning procedure, really. There wasn't any problem with planning, but it meant as I was undergoing an operation early on, I couldn't physically do much myself. I was hoping to use my then employee to start the project. Because of the six month delay, I had to let him go. So that the project was stopped. So it stopped us for quite a while and knock on effect, of course, it was longer than six months because I had to go back to work and earn some money first. The couple were able to get started on the garden and it now looks pretty established and it does look like it's being appreciated. In the back garden, we changed the shape, reduced the amount of lawn. Green doesn't like lawn. But we've changed the back part into a vegetable garden. The dogs love it. <laughs> yeah, they, but they, they don't distinguish between lawn, where they're supposed to be, and vegetables and flowers. They'll just trample over the lot. Graham and Karen have done 98% of the work here, which is no mean feat considering the scale of the jobs. And whilst the original time frame of one year is a distant memory, how is the original budget of £25,000 doing? We haven't yet paid for the underfloor under heating, which the room was standing in. A friend of mine's done that, and we're still waiting for the bill, and it's been a long time. Uh, so I don't know what that is, we can guess. Uh, but spending-wise, the receipts we have and what we've paid people have added up so far to £28,813.5 for Lenny Apens, <laughs> approximately. <laughs> OK, so that would make a total spend, including the original purchase price, of £94,313.5 shillings and eightpence. Although I think we could probably round it up to 95000 it's made a great home for their three Labradors, D, K and 7. But what will their improvements mean in, as Graham would say, pounds, shillings and pence? We asked two local estate agents for their opinions, starting with the agent who saw it originally. I'm incredibly impressed with this property. It's been a fantastic transformation. I saw the property when it was uh, sold at auction, uh, and it's a um, completely different property now. Um, it's it's, it's uh, spacious, it's light, it's been modernised throughout, um, and it's, uh, I think, a really good uh, proposition. I think the blend of modern conveniences with character is the way forward. And I think that uh, having things like double glazing, gas central heating, people expect that. But what they're looking for is a greater feel in their property. So the exposed beams, for instance, in the ceiling, the stonework around the, uh, the fireplace and chimney, the wood burning stove, all of that just adds a little something that makes this property stand out. The experts are impressed, and even though Graham and Karen are moving in, this is also an investment for the future, so they'll be interested in the rental valuations. If the bungalow were to be put on the market to rent uh, in its current condition, I would expect it to achieve something in the region of 500 to 525 pounds per calendar month. Normally, one would expect to get somewhere in the region of 550 pounds per calendar month. However, looking at this, if it particularly suited somebody, then maybe £600 per calendar month would be possible. That top rental of £600 would mean a yield of 7.5%, a very healthy return indeed. Hmm. We're going top to be rich. banana. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Smiles all round then. But what about those sales valuations? I think if this property were to be put on the open market for sale uh, in its new condition, um, we'd be looking at probably a price somewhere in the region of £125,000 to £135,000. I think the property has a value of around about £125,000. Certainly if I was going to put it on the market today, however, I would like to speculate and I think it deserves it. So I would probably speculate maybe as high as £140,000. It's a little bit yeah. more than you said, isn't it? Yeah, we, we were presuming £120,000. 
because it, it's it's not a highly sought after area. So if we went with a middle figure of 135,000, that would mean a potential pre-tax profit of 40,000 pounds for this pet lover's pad. Certainly not a profit to be sniffed at. Well, that's it for today's show, but join us next time when we'll have more stories from Planet Property. And we look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Two couples hand their front door keys to amateur designers. Brave. Your home in their hands, new at eight. Then broadcaster Reggie Yates is on the trail of his grandfather and gets a shock. Who do you think you are tonight at nine? Next on BBC One, more Saints and Scrounges. <laughs>